Hey everybody, Steve here. Welcome to this video on the Radio Master TX16S. In this video, we're gonna get this thing configured to work with lift off. And if by chance this is the first video that you've ever caught of mine, this is video number 14 in a series that I'm doing on the Radio Master TX16S. And if uh, you're interested in checking out any of the other videos, here's a quick look at the playlist. We started from basically zero and we worked our way through the vast majority of the menus and features of the radio as it pertains to multi-rotors. And now we're having fun. So if you're interested in checking out any of those videos, uh, check out the description for the playlist below. And uh, it's one link shopping for everything you ever wanted to know about this particular radio, OpenTX, and how it works with multi-rotors. But enough about that. Let's get to the liftoff. I am going to warn you right now, uh, getting your radio ready to play with uh, liftoff is not nearly as intuitive as it should be, but what I have done is I have consolidated all of the trials and tribulations and road bumps and speed bumps that I have found all over the internet and I have compiled them into one video so that you can get all of the information that you need right here. By no means am I trying to take credit for all of the solutions to the problems that I'm about to present to you. You can just consider me a compiler or an aggregator of many different sources on the internet. And really what I'm trying to do is it's a real pain in the ass to set the thing up. So I'm just trying to deliver it to you in one video so that you don't have to spend the three hours that I did going all over the internet looking for the answers. It's all going to be here and it's all coming up next. Hey, you, psst, stick around, because things are going to get good. All right, here we are, the Radio Master TX16S. Let's dive bomb into the next part. All right, so this is what you're going to want to do. You want to fire up your Radio Master TX16S. My calculations are correct. Well, this baby hits 88 miles per hour. Yeah, see some serious shit. Yeah, that's the warning that's going to be so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a new model. And for that, I reckon I'm going to zoom in. All right. So if you don't know how to create a new model, do me a favor. Check the description below for a detailed playlist on a lot of the basics uh, that you will need for this radio. But here's the thing. We're just going to go ahead and press and hold like so. And we're going to model select. And then you can press and hold again. And you can create model. But I'm not going to do that for the purposes of saving time here, uh, you're going to want to create a model. Uh, but what I'm going to do is get back out of this and I'm going to basically just go to my lift off. All right. So I am already in the model. Basically you just want to create a new model and give it a name. And what we're going to do is we're going to long press on model and we're going to go to inputs. And I've already input the stuff, which is going to actually save us some time in the video, but I'm going to walk you through it for your aileron long press, go to edit. You want your aileron to have a weight of 50%. You want your aileron to have an offset of 50%. You're going to go to curve and you're going to change your expo to 25%. And then you're going to return and return again. And you're going to go to elevator long press edit elevator weight 50% offset 50% expo 25% and then cut out throttle edit throttle weight 50% offset 50% expo 0% watch out for the rudder rudder Weight 50%, offset 50%, set your expo to 15%. All right, you should now be good to go, so let's give it a try. With your radio on and with liftoff selected as the model, go ahead and get ready to plug in your USB to both your computer and your radio. And this time when you look at your radio, you're going to have the opportunity to select either USB storage or USB joystick. And we're going to select joystick just like that. And it's going to go boop to do boop. And, and you would probably think that that was enough work, right? But it's not. All right. We are going to assume that you are starting from the absolute beginning of the begin. 
So I just go to Google and type in purchase liftoff. And the first thing that comes up is um, store.steampower.com. And you're going to click on that. If you are part of the uninitiated, as I was, and you know you want liftoff, but you have no idea how to go about getting it, you've got to go to this Steam website. And essentially what you got to do is you got to go and you've got to install Steam. So click on install Steam right here. And then we're going to come down over here and we're going to install Steam. And now it's already set up on my computer, so it's probably going to confuse it. But let me go ahead and hit save. Now it's dropping it into my downloads. So I'm going to click on my downloads, Steam setup, and yes, and next. Eh, English is good. Sure, why not? All right, so I am getting the login screen because I have already done this, but essentially what you're going to want to do is you are probably going to get a create account a dialog box here. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come up to login and click on it, and you've got an option to either sign in or create an account. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click on join Steam, and you're going to have to go through all of this stuff. Go ahead and fill out this form, click I'm not a robot, and then hit continue down at the bottom. Don't forget to agree to the terms and it's probably going to walk you through another couple of screens and at some point you will be a member maybe you'll have to answer an email or whatever but at some point you're going to be able to get to this screen right here where you can sign in so i'm going to go ahead and sign in all right so once you've logged in successfully you can go to store and go ahead and type in lift off and there it is. It's 20 bucks. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, it's worth every darn penny. Every darn penny. What an unbelievable game this is. I, can't, I, I honestly can't believe this game isn't two or three times that much. Go ahead and click Add to Cart to buy Liftoff. And then there are some other things that you can opt in for as well. All right, so the game will put a shortcut on your desktop. And you just double-click the uh, Steam icon. And it's going to ask you to log in. All right, so what's going to happen is once you log in, you can go over to your library and click on it. And there is my liftoff. And I can go ahead and click on it. And here we go. Oh, yeah. But it's totally not this simple. All right. So we're about one third of the way through it because when we go to options, and we go to controls, we're not going to get squat. Absolute squat. All right, so let's take care of this problem. All right, stick with me. I know this is a pain in the butt, but I'm going to tell you the game is worth it. It really, really is. Uh, what we want to do is go down into this little area right here. All right, and what you're going to want to do is start typing in control. And we're going to go to the control panel. All right, and we're going to go to hardware and sound. And let's go ahead and look at devices and printers. All right, so you can see here that it is at least listed as a USB device. But if we right click and we look at properties, it is being listed as a lib USB 132 and a better underscore USB HS. So we're just going to kind of make a mental note of that. And we're going to say OK. And we're going to pop back up one level and we're going to go to the device manager. All right, so we've got to find him in the list. And if we find him in the list, he is right here. And if we drop down, it's a better USB HS. Uh, we, that's the wrong driver. All right, so we most definitely don't want that. So let's go back to this page right here where we go to devices and printers. And let's get back to him. Here he is right here. And we're going to right click on him and we're going to go to properties. Now we've got this hardware thing right here. Let's click on the hardware tab. And let's actually click on this to highlight it. And then we're going to go down to properties. And now I want to go to change settings. And I get a new window. So let me just move them next to each other like so. And now I'm going to go to driver. And now I want to go to update driver. And I'm going to browse my computer for the drivers. Let me pick from a list of available drivers. The correct driver is this USB input device. Click him and say next. And it says it's updated our driver. And then we'll say close. And then we'll say close. And then we say close. 
And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to unplug him and then plug him back in. All right, and the one that was there before is no longer there, which is a good sign. Go back. I'm going back to control panel and uh, hardware and sound devices and printers and check it out he has graduated he is no longer in the unspecified column he is up here listed as a joystick and if i right click on him oh we even get game controller settings and it says fr sky Tranus, but don't worry about that it'll still work and then i can click properties and if i move my joysticks that is a very very good sign doesn't matter which way they move as long as your sticks do something and my sticks do do something and we're going to say okay and this is a very encouraging sign and then we're going to say okay and then we are going to get out of here and then all right so now with that behind us let's try going back into steam and now when you're back go to steam and go to settings and go to controller and go to general controller settings make sure that this is not checked right here Close out of this, close out of this, go to play. Then we're going to go to options and we're going to go to controls and controller. And hey, look, it says FR Sky Tyrannus. Check this out. All right, let's throttle up. Okay, so whoa, that's completely wrong. That's, I'm throttling up. And right now I'm yawing. Yawing works. All right, so what we're going to want to do, we have to click calibrate if our drone does not react as expected. So calibrate. And I'm going to go ahead and hit start calibration. Rotate all sticks. All right, assign the throttle axis. I'm throttling. Center all sticks. Access pitch. Oh, pitch. Sorry. Yeah, pitch. There's pitch. Roll. And yaw. There's yaw. And it says finish. So let's go ahead and fine tune. And here's my throttle, throttle. Okay, so I'm throttling up, throttling down. Now I'm going to roll to the left, roll to the right, pitch down, pitch up, and throttle up, throttle down, and yaw. Oh, my yaw, my yaw is backwards. My yaw is backwards, so it's a good thing I did this. I'm gonna go ahead and hit invert. Now I'm yawing to the left, yawing to the right, up and down, rolling, pitching everything works the way it's supposed to work and I'm going to hit save now I can hit exit All right, let's see how this thing does it's probably going to be pretty laggy because I've got my screen capture software on and the game itself it's not going to like that All right, so I don't want to get carried away and do a, a full review of this game slash simulator, whatever you want to call it. Uh, suffice it to say, it's amazing. The graphics are amazing. The physics are amazing. Everything about it is absolutely amazing. And will it make you a better flyer? I certainly think it will. If you're in FPV flying, this is the sim to get. If you want to fly line of sight, well, then I've got other ideas for that. So stick around, subscribe to the channel, and check out my next video. Because if you're a line of sight flyer, uh, I've got a totally different sim that I think that you'll like. 
All right, so my goal here is to stick with the topic, and the topic here is all about how TX16S integrates with the uh, simulator. So let's go ahead, and I want to show you one more thing. I can't possibly show you all of uh, the features of this sim because it's just so freaking amazing. But what I want to do is I just want to kind of show you one more thing that will really, really help you in working on this game slash sim, whatever you want to call it. So, so go to options and go to controls. And instead of controller, this time we want to go to buttons. Okay, so focusing on assigning um, buttons on the controller, this is something that you're most definitely going to want to do. And I don't know what your favorites are going to be, but for me, an absolute must is the reset button. I hate having to reach for the keyboard every time I want to hit a reset. What I've done is I've assigned my SH toggle button uh, as the reset. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into inputs on your radio and create a few line items for a few switches and assign them. Then you're going to want to go into mixes that will further determine exactly what those switches do. And if you're not following me, then you guessed it. There is a video in my series called inputs and mixes, and you're most definitely going to want to check it out. Okay. So once you have that switch assigned, you're going to want to go, for example, into reset and I'm going to click on it. And now because the switch is assigned, I can flick SH and assign SH to the reset button and hit confirmed. So as far as I'm concerned, that, that is an absolute must. Uh, the other one that I feel uh, is an absolute must is camera angle down and camera angle up. And what I did was I assigned a three position switch to that. All right, I'm gonna just show you the uh, end result of uh, the data entry for the inputs and the mixes. Uh, I got dogs barking and, and things going crazy in the background and uh, um, it took several minutes, so um, I'm just not going to include it. But uh, if you're interested in me doing a real detailed video on doing a whole bunch of these things, uh, just let me know in the comments and I can go ahead and do that. But here's the net result. Uh, we just added pretty, pretty simple, a reset switch and a camera switch. And there's the reset switch with the cam up, the cam off, and the cam down. And I'll go ahead and show you what the results are right now. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off and test my reset. works like a charm. I'm gonna go ahead and leave my throttle up here so that I can't take off and I'm gonna check my cam. Oh, there's my cam up and my cam down. Okay, so we took a little deeper dive here than I had originally anticipated. This video is a little bit longer than I thought it was going to be, but it was really important to me to accumulate all of the knowledge that I had ascertained all over the internet and compile it into one place so that it wouldn't take you nearly as long to get this game up and running as it took me. And I'm embarrassed to say it, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it anyway. It took over three hours for me to find everything that I needed, um, digging through the information miles deep on, on, on the drivers, the differing opinions and solutions for the, and solutions for those drivers. Uh, what I wanted to do is I just wanted to have one place where you could basically get all the information without having to do all that research. And I hope I was successful in doing so. If so, if you like the video, please like comment and subscribe and do me a favor, hit that bell so that you get future notifications because I got lots more videos coming out. Um, the next one is going to be the next sim that I like. And, uh, that sim is going to be the one that I love for line of sight flying. If you just want to learn how to fly line of sight, uh, this one is awesome for FPV racing and, you know, basically first person view. Uh, but if you want to fly line of sight, do me a favor, hit that bell, subscribe so you can get notification of the next video. And then there's just going to be dozens and dozens and dozens after that because there's just so much content. And this is such a hard, hard hobby. All right, I need to wrap this up, but do me a favor. If you really, really like the video, you found value in it, please, uh, the biggest favor that you could do for me is tell people, share on social media, post to discussion groups, et cetera, et cetera. It's the number one way you can help me out. I am not sponsored by anybody, so I don't get any of this stuff for free or anything like that. But I do like to talk about the products that I love. And I'm going to tell you, Liftoff is definitely, definitely one of them. And the TX-16S is most definitely one of them. All right, I'm rambling as usual. I'm Steve, cutting out till the next video. See you there.